Every hour, every hour, every hour, every hour, when, when we seek our knowledge of power, we turn to the no bullshit news hour. No bullshit. Are we up this time? Uh, uh, yeah. For how long? Who knows? You hear me? I can hear you. Yes. No bullshit. All right, everybody. It's a podcast, what do you expect? Or Jews House of Skank. Fucking basement. No bullshit! Oh my, let's just end breaking news. No more bullshit! No more bullshit! No bullshit! <laughs> Alright. As you know, or may not know, I volunteered to count absentee ballots in Detroit. So I went to the training class last Saturday at Cobo Hall, and I still call it Cobo Hall. As commanded by my official papers, supplied by the city government, which carries a barcode to prevent fraudulent people from sneaking in and attempting election fraud, I guess. I guess that's the reason. So my classmates arrived at precisely 1 p.m. All sorts of good citizens drawn to public service and the promise of $600 a day. A man with a cane, a woman in a wheelchair, two smartly dressed ladies in silk scarves and brooches, obviously pillars of the community, dressed something like members of the League of Women Voters, I I was thinking. So imagine their faces when we were abruptly told uh, the class was canceled. We have enough volunteers, barked the training supervisor from the uh, office of the Detroit City Clerk. We're no longer accepting people to count absentee ballots on Election Day, which was news to all of us. These are volunteers, remember. I didn't get no call, wheezed the man with the cane who was slumped in a chair and breathing laboriously. I've been doing this 20 years and I didn't get no call and I had to pay to get here. Now, the cancellation of the class, of course, flew in the face of everything the public still being told about this election. Do your duty. Volunteer for $600 a day. Come to Cobo Hall and count. Now, as of this very moment, classes are still being conducted. Calls for volunteers are still going out by way of social media. But the cancellation wasn't weird to me. I actually had expected it. Does this have something to do with me being here? I asked the supervisor, pulling down my dental mask, because I had done an unflattering story uh, about that guy some time ago on TV news, and he's held a grudge ever since. Yeah, he said to me, we don't want you here. That's what he said. We don't want you here. Now, I couldn't be sure if he was serious until he asked me, who put you up to this? Now, civic duty put me up to this quite naturally. This is a momentous election coming November 3rd. Tens of millions of ballots are expected to be cast by mail. The president of the United States has already insinuated that mass fraud is a possibility and add to the fact that the Detroit city clerk hasn't gotten a clean count done in years, put all that together and you got trouble. So duty, duty put me up to this. And the 600 bucks doesn't hurt either. And I said duty twice. (laughs) (laughs) What children? Now, look, the cancellation wasn't corruption. This was small time petty politics. Bullshit I'm always having to put up with in this town. But you know me. I went to the 9 a.m. class the following Monday to see if it had been canceled. Canceled my ass. The line for volunteers must have been a hundred deep. Many of them didn't even have their barcode papers. Tempers flew over to six feet distancing. People screamed at each other because nobody kept to it. And I can only wonder what it's going to be like on election night when they lock us all in. We were given a temperature check and herded into a massive ill-lighted hall where training tables were set up by precinct. Now, I took a seat at a computer. This makes me a captain of a five-person voting tabulating ship. I am the man who will scan and log the ballots in envelopes and input explanatory remarks over questionable ballots. 
Now, every vote has an envelope with the barcode that's electronically scanned, just like this, right here. Here's the envelope. Mm -hmm. Here's the ballot. They have a matching numbers to them. They're scanned. Remember that. That's me. The next, the person next to me verifies the ballot number and the voter number and signature back to me. The third person detaches the top here, the ballot tab, right, and places that in an envelope. The fourth person smooths the paper ballot and checks for tears. And the fifth person runs the ballots to the scanning machine for count. At the counting machines, there are two observers, one Democrat, one Republican, who watch for Hanky Panky. A section supervisor monitors the whole thing and assists me with counting the ballots. Now, it was only 90 minutes of training. That's one problem. But it didn't appear to me that any fraud on any appreciable scale is at all possible in the counting room. Envelopes and ballot numbers must be reconciled. Ballot envelopes are banded and stored, physical evidence. Those ballots that are under dispute are cataloged and placed in separate envelopes. One cannot pull a Brinks truck to the back of Cobo Hall and stuff the machine with these fake ballots. Can't be done. These have to be with them and the computer's watching it all. The true errors, now dig this everybody, please listen. The true errors come from people who make simple mistakes. Remember, these are volunteers. Many, many of them are senior citizens and they're sequestered by law for 14 hour stretches. No leaving the room, no smoking, bring your own supper and if you didn't bring it, too bad for you. Imagine what that does to an old person's blood. Yeah. If someone gets up for a toilet break, say me, the captain, and putting it all, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. An envelope might not get scanned. Somebody might just take the ballot and put it in the, in the bin to go be counted. It's really a ballot, hmm. but the envelope hasn't been scanned. Really, really possible, okay? What if you don't put your ballot in your envelope and you mail it in? Let's say this envelope is empty. Yeah, they have now, to match, right? Now mm -hmm. we have a, a dispute. If people don't chronicle it properly, it gets mixed up. Small human mistakes, but enough to launch a thousand conspiracies. And if it's coming from the highest office in the land, you can see what we might be in store for. During the August primary in Detroit, ballot counts were incorrect 72% of the time in Detroit's precincts. In 72% of the precincts, the number of these ballots didn't match the number of envelopes. Okay? Normally, this was a, within five. Yeah, that number seems unusually high. What? Five? No, 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 no. The 72. Yeah, but dude, it's if only one of these yeah. envelopes doesn't get inputted, right? Yeah. That's not reconciled. Gotcha. Okay. In most, the majority of the cases, it was less than five. I do feel better you being a captain. Yeah. I do. I mean, that's a lot. It, there's a lot to undertake. And I'm still not sure because it was only 90 minutes. So we're going to have some issues. You know, mm -hmm. how to, what button do you press on the computer to do a, what is the verbiage I'm supposed to put in if somebody uh, forgot or took their ballot, put it in their wife's envelope and the wife put her ballot in the husband's envelope and the barcodes don't match. It's stuff like that. That's why it doesn't match. Simply put, right, there were more votes than envelopes scanned. And in most of these cases, it's five or less. Hardly mass fraud. More like old people with 90 minutes of trading needing a potty break. Hmm. So now, with an expected 200,000 absentee ballots flooding into Cobo Hall in a very conspicuous city that never seems to get it right, you the citizenry should remain patient. We, the ballot inspectors, will be there on election night in the middle of a pandemic, doing our best, knowing your vote is sacrosanct. And don't worry. I'll periodically check the toilets and the garbage cans to make sure nobody's trying to flush away your vote. You got my word on it. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there's one thing Americans are, it's not patient, so...
Yeah. Now, speaking of American, the No Bullshit News Hour is brought to you by American Coney Island, Detroit's oldest family-run restaurant and birthplace of the famous Detroit Coney Dog. We all know what that is. They're open. They're clean. I don't even know the hours anymore, man. COVID's back up. But you, you can be very sure not one case has been found there. The gloves are worn. The masks are worn. The food is fresh. And if you don't want to come in and the holidays are coming, you can always get a Coney kit. Go to AmericanConeyIsland.com. Dozen dogs with all the fixings. Thank you for your patronage, American Coney Island. And ADR, right? If you yeah. got a business, you got a beef with your municipality, you're uh, an IT specialist with problems, you're a law enforcement agency that's looking for new technologies. Um, you call ADR consultants who are experts in procurement, government, compliance, information tech, and property management. Get the job done right, on time, on budget. ADR Consultants, 248-318-9424. ADR for your company, municipality, and law enforcement agency. Yes, sir. Now, where do they get the No Bullshit News Hour, which is the most listened to news hour in Michigan, by far? Mm -hmm. And we knew all our technology was breaking down. <laughs> we're not even on Apple iTunes for two months. Yeah. And we're still smoking. It. But they're all back there now. They're all up there anywhere. Google Podcasts, they're all up there. I just checked them the other day. Spotify, they're all up there. So nobody has an excuse as to why they can't listen. And do us a favor. Share, share, share. Tell your friends. Yeah. Because pe I still get people going, what happened to you? I miss you. What happened? Like I died. And I give them the card that Karen sent me. It said, no bullshit news hour. If our problems aren't obvious today, uh, this thing runs on a little shoestring budget. So it, it, does. Please, it really does help if people share. And especially word of mouth. Nothing's better than word of mouth. Word of mouth. All right. Well, so, Charlie, you also got to thank all your Facebook viewers. You know, you you automatically get 300 listeners off the back and people share it. By the end, you have about 15,000 views. So that helps, too. And thank you for tuning in to Facebook. Sometimes we get 25,000. Yeah. Hey, yes, know? we do. Look, I, I love you. You love me. We all love each other. We need the news. We need it now. We need it in an hour. Let's get it done today. Now, I have to. Last time I'm going to do it till the trial starts. I'm sick of it. The Wolverine Watchmen were in court this week over the kidnapping plot of Governor Gretchen Whitmer. And, of course, Governor Gretchen Whitmer was all over TV playing it up for what it was worth or what it was not worth. She's on The View. I couldn't believe it. The that. freaking View. Come on. This is the No Bullshit News Hour. We get things done. Okay. So, I just can't let it go. It's freaking ridiculous. Snatch her up. And take her to Wisconsin in the Scooby van and put her on trial in the barn and then lock her away for five years in a bear cage. I mean, really? So joining us right now is Mike Ratai, one of the preeminent defense attorneys in the United States, who it is said would win a lot more cases if he actually represented people who were innocent. <laughs> But you <laughs> look at that smirk. Let me see. Where I'm already scared of him. There he is. <laughs> hey, hold on a second. Let me get this off here. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Mike also defended the so-called Hutari militia down in uh, you know southern Michigan, and is a former United States Marine. Mike, how serious is this? I just can't take a conspiracy to kidnap plot. That seriously, what's what's how come? How come? <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> well, because uh, look at him. One, look at him. Two, she's got security. Three, they already knew about it. They they've been these guys got together on social media, and the FBI, two FBI agents were in the group, and two other guys were snitches, and the snitches didn't know they were snitches. So, I mean. Were they really going to knock on her door? She answers it, grab her. They throw her in a Scooby van and drive off to Wisconsin. I don't even know if they have the money to get the ferry from Muskegon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are all excellent points, Charlie. And Thank it's you, Mike. sort of, it reminds me of uh, our defense from, from what I've seen so far and what I've read, um, what's going on over there in the Western District of Michigan and Grand Rapids. Um, in the detention hearings or the preliminary exam or whatever the heck was going on over there. I, I can tell you in 31 years, I've never held a preliminary examination in federal court. I was surprised that the government decided to proceed that way, as opposed to just doing the detention hearings, going and getting their indictment and not having to go through a preliminary exam. But 
that's another uh, for another day. But what I did hear, one of the lawyers had enough brains to ask the following questions to one, to the FBI agent is what the details, how were they going to do this? When were they going to do it? Who was going to be involved? How were they going to get her from wherever in Michigan over to Wisconsin? Like you said, were they going to use Noah's Ark across Lake <laughs> Michigan? I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, and I thought it was very um, telling as to what you can is going to come down the road once this case starts to um, gather some traction and some speed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think your comments are spot on, to be honest with you. So is this a look, is this. Is this a First Amendment issue? Quite quite frankly, look, this is what these guys yeah. were doing. We know this from some evidence that was put out at the preliminary. Um, they have weapons. They're taking videotape. They're scoping her out. They're driving by the house. Is this sort of a, let's snatch these guys up before they do some harm, yeah. jam them in the cooler for two years, right? Whether they're acquitted or not, we, we, right. we extinguish the immediate threat. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happened in the Hatari case. I mean, exactly what happened. I mean, they, they, they snatched all these people up. Now, mind you, um, I think they had about 200 federal agents and uh, uh, armored uh, personnel carriers and tanks and helicopters with, uh, you know, Puff the Magic Dragon on the side of each helicopter looking for these people. I mean, with no disrespect to our clients from that case, they wouldn't have been able to overthrow the dog catcher in Hillsdale County. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, um, but they use those kind of resources to arrest our people. And uh, most of them sat in uh, jail for two years until the case came to trial. And I can remember the first day of trial after we picked the jury and opening statements were made. And I won't mention the reporter's name, but someone from the free press came up to me before we started trial that day and I said just go sit in the back and watch this case is going to come on is going to fall apart in about five minutes and I started the cross-examination of the federal agent now mind you the courtroom at uh, the first day of trial the courtroom was full of nothing but tactical gear guns ammo I mean piled eight feet high all around the courtroom I mean it was like you know it was a shock and awe dog and pony show by the government, right? I took the federal agent through every piece of evidence that was in that courtroom, and she had to eat the fact that everything in there was legal. Everything. You could buy it at Cabela's. You could buy it online, blah, 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 blah. So um, the, the case started to fall apart immediately after that. And one of the things that you're going you're gonna to need to look for in this case, and it happened in our case, is – the undercover agents, the confidential human sources, how much were they pushing this? You know, we don't know that at this time, but it seems to me that the agents that were working undercover and the confidential human sources that they used may have been egging these uh, fellas on. If I could, because so that, that. that's exactly what, what I was reading in this thing. Like do, the Hutari, you know, the, the plot, with your clients, the alleged plot was they wanted to kill a cop and at the cop's funeral, they wanted to blow up a bunch of other cops. But in order to get the explosives, they were going through the federal agent. Yeah. The, uh, the FBI, the undercover FBI agent, Jersey, Steve, um, God bless him. Jersey he brought Steve. the bomb to the party. You huh. know what I mean? I mean, he's the one that said, I, I can get you pipe bomb. Well, you know, I mean, there's a big difference really. Uh, and I've been saying it all week. Uh, publicly. Uh, our people were nothing more than doomsday preppers. Um, the, 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 the conversations they had were just a bunch of smack talk sitting around a campfire. They liked to play army. They were really preparing for the end of times. They were Pentecostals. Um, they read the Bible literally. Um, these fellas appear to have a different agenda, you know, on its face. Uh, but it remains to be seen whether the government's going to be able to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. But I think, you know, as we talked about at the opening, I mean, the devil's in the details, man. And I think the government learned something because in our case, they charged our clients with sedition, which is conspiracy to overthrow the government, which was a hell of a stretch in that case. Here, they, 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 
focus their um, the allegations on this conspiracy to kidnap. And the law is you don't have necessarily have to complete the kidnapping crime to be guilty of the conspiracy. So uh, they may have learned something from our case. So I guess uh, the you know the jury's out. We'll we'll have to wait and see. So congratulations on that. Well, I, I was wondering because you hit on the point about kidnapping being easier to prove. Um, does the fact that there was a specific target in the governor as opposed to just a police officer does that matter? How much does that matter in the eyes of the law? I think it matters a lot, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it, you know, our guys they, they didn't even identify a cop when they were sitting around yeah. a campfire after they, they got done playing army and they were getting all pissed off about this cop who pulled me over for going five miles over. I mean, they never really identified a, a specific police officer, um, you know, a specific individual. So uh, that all came out in the trial, and obviously Judge Roberts saw right through this thing immediately, and you know she kicked the case after two months of trial and after our clients basically had been political prisoners for two years. So, well, know. Mike, like like Charlie said, you're one of the best attorneys, hands down. But outside of what I'm hearing is probably a defense position. Could you be trivializing what maybe if you were on the other side you would take seriously? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you have to look at it both ways. I mean, uh, I'm not involved, so I can be objective. But clearly, they identified the governor, right? Yep. Uh, there was They had a target. Um, they did uh, take some overt acts to carry out this quote-unquote plan, uh, i.e. staking out the governor's um, uh, vacation home, her residence, buying night vision goggles, things like that. That really didn't take place in our case. So there there certainly is a distinction between our situation and, and the current situation. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree with that. And absolutely, they were speaking dangerously. Their actions were dangerous. Right. It's easy with a long arm. You're a former Marine. It's easy with a long arm and night vision goggles to take a pot shot or something right. worse. There's no doubt about that. But I figure the conspiracy to kidnap is a heavy federal charge. You talking some shit about I'm going to assassinate somebody could be a construed as First Amendment right. So they found right. something that they can glue on them. Right. Agree? I agree. Okay. I agree 100%. Do you agree with the Fed's decision not to warn members of the state legislature who they were also talking about? That's more scary to me. Storming yeah, I, the legislature, yeah, I, yeah, shooting I mean, people, I, taking houses. No, I don't know about that specific aspect of the story, Charlie, or what they, you know, did or didn't do. Um, you know, I mean, um, that's part of the, the story that I'm not really familiar with, but, um, I, I mean, you know, I think the less the people knew, the better for the investigators and the uh, FBI agents, to excellent. be honest with you. Good. Excellent. Because here's a statement from me. Haven't done many of these cases. Yeah which is the FBI's inside with these knuckleheads, right? right. They got confidential informants. They're wired up. Right. If there's a legitimate threat, they're going to sweep them up. But this would imperil a case in which you could pick up 13 people. And like I said, throw them in the cooler for a couple of years, like the Bundys, wh whomever it may be, cool them down and teach them how to behave. Right? Right. Okay. I mean, and you know, the other thing too is, I mean, maybe they didn't trust some of the Republican uh, legislators. You know, they could have tipped these guys off. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll bet you dollars to donuts that went, that was part of their thinking in this case. Would have to be because, uh, you know, I mean, uh, people high up in in uh, the Republican Party and state government are on the stage with these guys. Of course, We're holding and, patriot I mean, You know, and and and, and it, you tell me why these Republicans will not ban. Uh, weapons on the state capitol grounds. Why the fuck do you need to bring a fucking a long arm or a handgun to the state capitol? Mm -hmm. Somebody please explain that to me. Well, look, okay? you made a lot of money on the Hutari case, right? Made a pretty good, pretty good chunk of change. Yeah, on my ass. Don't pocket watch, Charlie. Don't on my pocket ass. watch. <laughs> what did you do with that <laughs> money, that. Mike? Uh. To be honest with you, Charlie, one of the things that I did do is I went down to Cabela's and bought myself a nice M4. So he bought okay. himself a semi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's allowed to. I, I, right. Well, I guess that would almost answer your question, Mike, is they can yeah. carry him because of the Second Amendment. They can yeah, carry him. Okay. But there's, uh, there, look, 
this, this, all these retards, okay, that hang their hat on the Second Amendment, you know, are fucking ignorant, okay? Because all of the Bill of Rights have limitations on them. Just like the First Amendment says you can't yell fire in a crowded theater, okay? So it's the same thing with the Second Amendment, okay? There's limitations on it, okay? Even Justice Scalia wrote about that in um, that one opinion, and it, the, the name of the case escapes me. But even a conservative judge like Scalia uh, recognized that there's limitations on the Second Amendment. And, of course, when the Second Amendment was written, okay, basically it was so the uh, uh, our, our – our founding fathers and our early, the earliest citizens could go out and um, kill a deer or shoot a t- turkey mm-hmm. to put food on the table. Okay. Had nothing to do with carrying around automatic. Look at why does anybody need a, an automatic weapon? Why does anybody need a hundred drum? Then why did you get magazine? one? Huh? Then why did you get one? I didn't get, I didn't, I don't have a hundred drum magazine. Okay. Well, I you, have you know, my automatic weapon. Uh huh. A, but I bought it just to basically fuck you to the government. That was my little fuck you to the government, you know. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Well, but you, I mean, there, I mean, look, you seem are, like the dreamboat lawyer there's, for there's limitations. That's all I'm saying. There's limitations. There's no reason to have. You know, and you know what? All these mili- these guys that wrap themselves in the Gadsden flag, okay, they're all a bunch of losers. Look at them, okay? They live in trailers. They have no mm-hmm. lives. Okay. This is their, this is, that gives them their self importance, their self worth, you know, where they can wrap themselves in the Gadsden flag and, you know, and complain about the government, you know, and all this other bullshit. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a joke. You know, I mean, we're getting away from the topic, but I mean, you know, no, when, no you look at these clowns, when you look at these clowns, I mean, I, I just want to laugh. And my, you know what? And here's the oh, other thing, down. too. Most of them never served in the military, and if they were actually involved in a in a gunfight, they'd probably most of them would throw their guns down and run the other way. What was the long lasting? Do you know what the long lasting effect was to the members of the Hutari um, once they're arrested and let out? I mean, does it does it uh, make them dig in and hate the government more? Do they realize, oh, maybe we shouldn't do this? I'm just wondering what lo- you know what the long. I know. I, I tell you, I tell you. Let well, me answer. Like, tell me if I'm wrong. Success- I mean, they're all out of that stupid movement. That's one. that's what happens. Yeah, I'm telling you, two years in the can, and everybody puts down that little pocket uh, um, constitution because in the they've studied it in the can, and then they All see right. Article Three, which is the courts are the final arbiter of a dispute. It's what your fighting's already been arbitrated, and you got to follow the law of the land. That's what happens, right? I mean, you know, David Stone is a township supervisor down there in Hillsdale County. Um, you know, Mike Meeks uh, became the constable in Manchester. Um, you know, I mean. He became the, the constable. Yeah, they actually he got a constable down in Manchester. <laughs> the, the militia yeah. dude <laughs> who's on trial for sedition becomes the, the law. Part of the, part of the, yeah. Oh, there's news. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. he finally got his badge. Yeah. Wow. Which begs the question. Yeah. These guys, you know, uh, the uh, Wolverine Watchmen, who, you know, the mastermind, the alleged mastermind is kipping out on the floor in the basement, the sub basement of a vacuum repair shop. Um, they got a pretty good chance if that's tried locally to get off. Right. Well, I mean, the Western District is a big. Obviously, there's a lot of people come from all over the place, you know west side of the state but yeah when the the west side of the states you know generally speaking is much more conservative than the eastern half of our state you know i mean generally speaking or as you said uh, a, a lot more assholes living in trailers which by the way my grandma lived in a triple wide so take it back <laughs> what can i tell you bro did she carry uh, charlie yeah my, my grandma Oh, they yeah. had weapons, but no, they, they my I'm grand. Sure, let's put it this way, Charlie. I'm sure it was clean. I'm sure she kept it clean. It didn't look like something the fucking cat slept in, you know, an outdoor cat like this. They, they had it on the news the other day. I mean, it's typical, you know, typical. Well, but, you know, to they, be honest, she was getting old at the end. And they yeah. want to blame everybody else for their miserable lives. So let's blame the government. Let's wrap ourselves around in the Gadsden flag. You know, let's complain, you know, and then let's talk tough, you know. 
you know, I mean, you've, you've heard some of the conversations that went on. I mean, it's been reported. Uh, you know, they all want to be, they all want to be, you know, tough guys. They all want to be, you know, like we're in the military, you know, let's, let's just grab her, a snatch and grab, you know, let's snatch her, her right you know, off her porch. You're not going to do it and snatch yeah. the dick. Yeah. That's yeah. a great plan. <laughs> As a juror, I'm like, wow. Wow. This but, guy, this guy know, needs to go away for life. You know, the one thing that everybody needs to know, and I stated it the other day, is they are all innocent until proven guilty, and the burden is on the government of the United States and then uh, Dana Nessel and her crew. Uh, they have the burden. So we'll have to wait and see whether they carry that burden or not, you know? I mean, in our case, they, they fell awfully short. I mean, the judge wouldn't leave, let the case even go to the jury. Uh, so, I mean, um, but, you know, every case is different. But the bottom line, all these boys, despite their uh, um, um, situation and everything else like that, they are, um, they are innocent until proven guilty. So that has to be uh, kept in mind as we watch this thing go down. Last question for you, Mike. Uh, is if you can put that put that uh, the mug shots back up on there, right? The class picture. There you go. Which of these guys looks like the biggest goofball? Which one do you, you think these guys missing half a chromosome? Well, that fox for sure. Uh, upper, Which one is that? Upper Number left hand one. corner. The one who and looks that, most uh, like me with the yeah. oversized mandible. Yeah, exactly. He looks like a real goofball. I'm, I'm thinking the bottom two left. Please, this, hey, under him. this is a yeah, podcast, was, so yeah. describe said said uh, photo. Yeah. No, like, uh, g- give me their vi- g- explanation of who you're picking out, Karen. Uh, I don't know how they all look alike to me. I mean, I don't know how to describe them. Um, that's just racist. The, if, wow, if you're that's looking so at them, racist. So racist, Karen. They're all white said, and Karen. They all look alike to me. <laughs> they do. They literally all look all, you know, I didn't want to say this the other day when they asked, what do you see? And I was like, say no to inbreeding. They all look good. <laughs> but anyway, those, so could, be my, bottom, those could be my relatives, bottom, Karen. You said what? They could be my relatives. A lot of them kind of look, you know, I'm a fat white guy with a beard. Yeah. Those two boys in the, in the, Mark, in the bottom you, you right. Have into, you have intellect in your eyes. They have hate in their eyes. Oh. Okay. The bottom roll first two from the left. Something's really wrong with them. But then again, the bottom two on the right, all of them look creepy look, to me. The so. bottom two on the right look like Mark. Right, Karen, those two boys, the, the bottom they're right. They're twins, I'm, right? They're, yeah, they're brothers. Yeah. And you could just, you know, they they have photographs of those clowns over up at the Capitol, you know, right. when they had their stupid yep. second amendment. Which, rally, which by you know? the way, like, again, as a gun owner, Karen carries, uh, he's going to be on the show a little bit later, uh, Flint City Councilman Maurice Davis carries. Do you carry yep. rat's eye? No, okay. I don't care. Okay, the point being... But I own guns. The point I being, we all agree that these dudes are in a cell talking about lighting up the Capitol and they're there with their weapons. To me, that implies some sort of intimidation motive. Now, For sure. before we get any farther, uh, Mannequin Joe, please put the simultaneously the mugshot picture back up and then a picture of Mark... Right next to it. If you can just Boy, do all right, uh, a, closer. Are you doing it? Okay. Well, you can just put my camera on. I'll try and put his camera put on. My best mugshot face. And I want you guys to look here. Okay, put the <laughs> other. Can you see both of them? I, well, not, not, not next to each other. Okay, well, so I there's Mark. Mark. Okay, there's Mark. Uh, okay, now, now jump over, Joe, and show the mugshot of two bro- on the bottom right. Those guys are fucking related. Hey. It's a, it's a triplet. <laughs> I've never met him. You can't you you can't even fake it, Mark. Stop. Uh, you've Seriously. never seen me in the same room as those guys. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Yeah. No, no. There's something of no, and and people are commenting that but you know, this is wrong for us to say that they all look alike and it's racist. It's not racist. <laughs> they literally all Hello. look like relatives. Wait a minute. Hello. No, it's not. I'm assuming I'm movie. assuming those comments then they look scary. I'm assuming those comments out there are a joke. Because it's a joke. It's just a joke. I don't know. Relax. Mine was yeah. a joke. Lighten up. Yeah, you know, just relax. We know. And you yeah. and respect to all Every, people. Everybody's all Here's what kids. we do. Here's what we now do. Here's what we should not do, no matter how you look. Don't drive around a car with your best buddy, the FBI agent that you doesn't know is an agent, and you're trying to light off a water balloon <laughs> filled with firecracker powder and BBs and it won't light. Okay. And you think somehow you're gonna blow up a bridge? Right. I'm sorry. They're missing a chromosome. No doubt. Okay, that's no all. I, no doubt. I'm just in the middle here. These guys couldn't take over their brother's trailer payment, much less snatch a governor. And now the new plan was 
put her in a boat in the middle of Lake Michigan. What? Put her in a boat in the middle of Lake Michigan. You don't have a boat. <laughs> and if you had a boat, why would you, would you not just dump her in Lake Michigan? It ain't like she's swimming back. It's really big. I'm just saying. Yeah. Got look, it. Charlie, what you just said is the heart of go what's going to be the defense. Exactly, mm -hmm. brother. Thank you. Because, you know, I got to entertain the people, but I do have a mind. I have been with the Bundy people. I've been with the, the, the militia on the border. I've been in Oregon. I've maneuvered with the Michigan militia, the three percenters in Idaho, the three percenters in Ohio. I know these guys, too. They're playing army but, man. But wait a second. Is being dumb and not having resources? I mean, that's not a is that really that good of a defense? Mike? No, it's a crime, I think. Right, you guys uh -huh. are taking surveillance. You're, you're you're talking and physically working on harming a governor. Yeah, a very specific person, and they're taking very specific acts. But the the, the real charge, the federal long term conspiracy charge, is kidnapping. Yeah, which is fairly That's, fairly easy to prove. I, well, we'll see, man. Yeah, how do you think it plays out, Mike? But aren't most, but aren't, aren't, aren't most, you know, when you, when you start looking and I know we're not getting into the social aspect of the criminal mind or behavior, but you got most people are limited on resources and intellect that opt for crimes, whether it's through survival or for lack of anything. And so, you know, no racial lines there. If you go through, you know, and Mike, you weigh in on this. I mean, those are issues that contribute to criminal behavior. What'd you There's just no say? Question. Well, what? No I didn't even understand the question. What? You mean because you're poor and dumb? Listen carefully, Charlie. Yeah. No, come on. <laughs> that's what Mark. But that's what that's what Mark. But that's what Mark said. You know, is being dumb and without resources. You know, I mean, but A those defense? are factors. And I'm not saying the word dumb. I'm saying people that may be limited in their uh, ability to make an educated or informed decision and lack of resources. Charlie, you talk all the time. People are broke. People don't know what to do. I mean, so those are contributing factors to um, to criminal behavior. Yeah, we just, listen, the bottom line to all this right now as we sit here today is we don't know all the facts, okay? We don't, we haven't seen any evidence, okay, uh, admissible evidence other than what we've read in the paper. So um, this is going to be a long, uh, long road, you know, it's a little marathon, it's not a sprint. All these cases, they're marathons. And uh, like I said, you're not going to have a trial in this case for at least, I'd say, two years, to be honest with you. And uh, between now and then, a lot of can happen. A lot of things are going to come out. Uh, maybe some exculpatory, maybe some inculpatory. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, you know, um, like Charlie was saying, I mean, I think you really got to the heart of the defense, okay, is that. And then the lawyer started, I mean, he already set the stage. The one lawyer, when he was cross-examining the agent the other day about details regarding this uh, scheme, this conspiracy and he kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So that's a precursor of what you're going to see down the road. Thank you, sir, for your expert analysis. We uh, always love having you on. And if you could give Thanks, us God. give us your, we lost the sound bite that we used to mix into our intro. If you give it back to us again, which is, I'll shove it up there and break it off in your ass. You can give us that one more, one more time. You mean when I used to say, I'll break it off in your ass? Yeah, give me one. Like that just one? A, re a real, real clean clean sound bite and three two one i'll break it off in your ass well, that's pretty good but with some emotion I mean, you know like before three two one i'll break it off in your ass how's okay, that charlie okay. one more for, oh safety. for safety <laughs> for, for safety you need a talent oh, Reese, Mike. come on help me bro three two one i'll break it off in your ass that's a take. Thank you, brother. We'll, we'll see you All soon. Right, bro. All right, man. You need a talent. You need a talent fee, Mike. I care. <laughs> Bye. The the that was Mike Rattai, defense he's attorney to the militia. He sounds like a marine, and you know you can hear that 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 marine training in, uh, <laughs> yeah. in his presentation. The guy's got <laughs> such a sharp mind and such a regular way of talking that that's what I appreciate about it. Sharp mind, not afraid of what he thinks, not afraid to say it. And I understand how he says it. And a few curse words to boot. Can't beat that. that. Explicit Please. content. Well, when I'm in trouble, I'm <laughs> calling him. Well, you know. <laughs> Who would want a better defense attorney? You know, it's funny. 
When you're financially in trouble. Oh, who do I call that? Uh, Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Well, 248-663-4748 for rational financial advice. Mike, if you'd like to stay with us, we're going to have um, Flint City Councilman Maurice Davis on a little bit later. and you know, I, I got to run, brother, but please have me back. $500 an hour, he's got to run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How'd you know my rate, bro? He's a he's a pocket watcher, Mike. He's counting <laughs> <your> money. <laughs> hey, everyone, have a good weekend. Thanks, you Mike. too. Speaking Thanks. of five hundred dollars an hour, we don't all make it. So look out for your money, right? Look what the market's doing. Is it, I, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Yeah. Well, call Luke. I was just trying to get my will in order on my, my stuff in case I, I die or COVID gets to me or I get wiped out or I get kidnapped and thrown into Lake Michigan. <laughs> I got some paperwork done. And I'm like, okay. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Let's think about that, Mark. I think we got a, I think we got a plan. We'll She's get, uh, we'll get She's Davis to weigh in on this. Uh, yeah, we, we can do this. What, what you're missing, Karen, is Charlie's very resourceful. He would row that boat <laughs> to, to the nearest boat or land and then get it back. <laughs> And have, tenfold. Par- and have a party on it. <laughs> I've watched Netflix. I've seen the scenario. I know how to get out of these scenario. things. I've also watched MacGyver. I can turn that thing into a gun and a boat and a bond to blow up the bridges and a barricade. Where I'm gonna, what if they convicted the governor? Where were they going to hold her? A barricade? <laughs> yeah, one that they built. Yeah. <laughs> they were just going to kidnap her and make her take off her mask because that seems to be the underlying frustration with wearing masks. So maybe they were just going to kidnap wow. her, take her mask off, take a picture and say, hey. But we digress because yeah. oh, no. Luke Nowacki, right? Yes. <laughs> if you run a pension fund, he do, he he advises on those. If you're a small to me- medium, even large company, he does that. Your mother needs help. He helps my mother. He's the guy that I recommend. And everything he said in his quarterly prospectus, prospecti, were correct. He's really sharp guy. And I, I trust him and, mm-hmm. and he manages some of my money. So you're going to call him at 248-663-4748. Get advice, get a strategy. Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. Member FINRA SIPC. Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names. Products or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. You know, maybe maybe the, the councilman will give us a blues version of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be cool. For the disclaimer, what we'll, we'll ask him. Don't forget. To remind me, he, writing it down. He's as, listening. I know, but <laughs> but but the people don't know that. Gary, they're giving away the secrets. Everybody knows Zoom technology. <laughs> he's there. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll remind you, Charlie. Guess what happened yesterday? What for the tenth time this year? Mortgage rates. Oh wow! Hit a new all-time record low for the tenth time yesterday. I didn't think Aver- I'd see it. On average, it's like 2.81. You might not get 2.81. You might get less. It might be a little more. You know how you figure it out if you're looking, finally, to get out of the city, get a little suburban peace, get some space, get the people off you. You don't want to breathe in on you. Who do you trust? Where do you get personal 24-hour Where? service? I, I don't know. Please tell me. I think you do. I'm not sure. David... More, Hall mortgage.com David Hall mortgage.com or two four eight three zero eight five thousand. You've actually used them. I have used them, yeah. And uh, it worked, it was very fast, it was really easy, actually. Yeah, they're twice I mean, as honest, fast as I'm, their competitors. It's true, honestly. Yeah, that's why they got five thousand five star reviews. One of them being yours, one of them being mine. Are you gonna go again? Uh, do I need do I have to buy another house? No, you can refi. Again? You don't just have to buy a house. You can refi. Again? So let's say you're in at four. You now can get in at three. Well, what I've heard- What does that do to your monthly payment? I've heard the rates have never been lower. Exactly. Well, that's the 10th time all time this year. David Hall Mortgage, the best in the business. That's why he advertises here. And that's why sometimes we talk. He actually sometimes talks to me. He's a good dude. And Charlie, yeah. Charlie, this is it because I, I want to I want to say this. Paul uh, made this comment on Facebook and I was thinking the same thing. It's yeah. not you don't want to move out of the city into the suburbs. Maybe you want to come into the city. We got a population decline, only 600,000 people. You can buy a house in the city. You can still finance. Use that financing yeah, for that Everybody's well. a critic. Hey, all I know is those homes in Indian you're Village right, are very, very nice. You're, you're right. On all accounts, Karen's home is very, very nice. <laughs> Karen's husband's hey. a realtor, so, you know. 
I made she, a trip. I made, I made a trip is, down there today. That is gorgeous. true, Paul. But with this mayor and this proposition and business, no, and the eighty no, mills, no. I just no. here's the thing, man. When I move back, and you know, I don't lie. I'm me. I live my life. I can't afford to live in Detroit. That's true. It's I, expensive. I, that's what I was telling Mark. I said, mm-hmm. Mark, you know, I mean, I was actually working in the mayor's office when we bought this home many years ago. And I said, I can't drive to Bloomfield Hills and, 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 and you know, for home when I'm trying to tell people what a great city this is. I can't be a hypocrite like so many of the appointees are right now. They all live somewhere else. I need to do and, ex- and, and, and exemplify what I believe in and what I'm asking everybody else to. But it is expensive. Insurance, private school for the kids. Uh, security issues, you know, I mean, all those things. Property it, taxes. Labor law. See, yeah, the pro- Detroiters are the highest tax per, yep. at the rate. The houses aren't worth what they are in Portland, as we pointed out before, but the highest rate in the nation and people in Wayne County, the second highest rate in the nation. There's the uh, city well, income tax it. too, right? And there's a city yep. income mm-hmm. That you got to now make sure you pay quarterly, make sure everybody's paying their taxes. Water is now computed based on the square footage of your entire property, not necessarily consumption. It's a whole lot of stuff, man. They they are pricing people right out of the city, okay. which is why we say no on end. So, and this is why we say yes to David Hall Mortgage. You're going to get the lowest rate in the quickest amount of time, lower your note. Thank you very much. Play the disclaimer. All right. Uh, he doesn't have a disclaimer. Yes, he does. MNL, <laughs> NMLS number one. I can't read it from here. Let me make a note for Maurice. One, four, to six, seven, one. four, three, five. Okay. Now, um, quick news. Quick news before we get to Maurice Davis, City Councilman Flint. Nursing homes. The state legislature, uh, with its constitutional powers returned, passed bills th- this week, unanimously requiring nursing homes to... Prove they have designated air. Prove they have designated uh, areas and staff to deal with COVID patients. Provide appropriate levels of care, minimum standards that weren't there. It also requires nursing homes and other long-term care facilities, of which they are the majority that we never counted, to finally track COVID cases, deaths, and staff shortages. The House also passed a resolution giving subpoena power to the committee reviewing the governor's handling of the pandemic. So good. And people involved with that, Pete Le- Senator Pete Lacito, state representative, state rep Leslie Love, friends of the show. We talked closely with them from the beginning. We were ringing the bell. I think this is, this is a banner day. That's good. Cause I'm so sick of COVID mm-hmm. and it really, hurts old people. We all know that. And it was a crying goddamn shame that it took this long to get this done. So I hope we get to the bottom of it. Next. Councilman, I'm hearing there's movement in the Flint water case. The PR campaign to save face has begun with the attorney general's office. Reporters acting on a tip happened to be standing outside the courthouse in Flint this past week, waiting for an obscure former member of former Governor Rick Snyder's staff to testify to a one-man grand jury. So the speculation flies. What did Snyder know? And when did he know it? Did he know about legionnaires before he said he did? Did he lie to Congress? It could be juicy. Are they going to hit him with manslaughter? I don't think they have the, the chops or the evidence. Are they going to hit him with perjury to Congress? I don't think they know how. Will they get him with uh, abuse of public funds? Whatever it is, expect it not to be of any great substance, even if it sounds like it. Here's where it's at. RICO, racketeering, conspiracy, the organization, that was dropped by the attorney general. Now, finally, and I'll wrap this up. I'm told by somebody who's not in the inner legal circle that the feds may be handling that Rico case, Mm. how they came up with the money, how Flint could borrow it when they were broke to do it, how they used a little sludge pond to borrow a hundred million dollars and never cleaned up the sludge pond. That's where it's at. And that ties in lots and lots of ballers in this state. That's where the original case was going before it was scuttled by the attorney general. Sorry, madam, you can come here and argue with me. We got you on tape. We know. So I'm told, finally, there'll be movement here. 
sometime following the election, like maybe in November. Wow. So that's, that's that's a tough case. That's the news. Now, having said that, I'd like to welcome in Maurice Davis, Flint City Councilman, pistol packing member of the NRA, <laughs> a Trump supporter. I don't know if he is this time. He last time he was, uh, and a pretty good musician known as the King of the Party Blues, who's introducing his own legislation in Flint. But before we get to that, Mo, what are you hearing about uh, the Flint? water trials. You got any inside info for us? Well, we hear quite a bit, Charlie, but all of it is just bullshit. Oh, I and, like you this know, guy. We don't have no confidence. We don't have no confidence. And, you know, it's just sad how they plan the residents here. It's been a money grab. Money come, but it goes out of one person pocket into the other. We have attorneys from all over the country, but yet nobody seems to get nothing. And I don't know what's going on up in the high officials, like you say, with Snyder now. We're not satisfied. We're not crazy. So when you say the money comes, and goes, what are you talking about? We've we've covered it. But for those, please, y'all, this is Flint's moment. Flint's our brothers and sisters. We like to keep track of it. Thanks for being on, Mo. What money and what happened? What are you, what are you talking about exactly? Okay, I'll start by saying pipe replacement. How in the hell are you going to replace about so many feet of pipe? Nobody, you got to, you can't put old wine in new, I mean, New wine and old wine skins. Change a few feet of pipe when everybody know the whole appliances and everything in your house been contaminated by this water. Hundreds of millions of dollars. When it come, instead of giving it to people, and most people over here is in foreclosure, by the way. This is an impoverished community. Yeah. Instead of giving that money to the residents to help them, a lot of people is dying daily. And, and not to mention the pre-existing conditions they have. Nobody doing nothing for the residents. It's just watching all of the money come, all the hoopla, but yet we're in the same shape but worse. Well, dig and that. that's what's going over in Flint. Dig that. Mm. This is a man critically involved in local politics of Flint, and he just told you nothing. What, what about that $600 million settlement they're talking about? Doesn't that <laughs> warm your, your, your testicles? It don't do nothing for us. Like I said, I got a niece that's laying over in over here is a cemetery called Graceland Cemetery. It's personal to me. Six hundred million don't even scratch the surface. And then the, the the saddest part of it, hell, is allocated to the kids. You know they don't give money to minors, so it, the the grown folks, kids don't pay water bills and and like I say, house notes and all of the houses over here mostly is talked out. Like the young lady stated earlier, you know they priced us out of here. They building brand new apartments and it's, it's gentrification with all this movement and all this talk all over the nation every day is food lines people getting in as we speak huh block loans and you know what lines. did you karen you just called karen a young lady yes thank you there you go <laughs> Thank you. The camera works. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark went over there and put in a new camera for Karen. <laughs> uh, my young lady. But, 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 but councilman, I mean, and, and I know that I guess you and another council person contested, you know, the installation of, you know, just that, that, that short pipe as in terms of a replacement. And that prompted one of maybe a couple recall attempts for you. It seems that you're trying to work on behalf of a comprehensive solution for the residents. Why would somebody contest that? It's three recalls against me for number one. I'm not a, they call me Uncle Tom, boot liquor and all of this. And you could clear at least see in two seconds. I'm not nothing to play with. I have my own money. I'm a musician. So I don't have to agree to that bull crap. I'm here to serve people. And uh, they, even uh, earlier this week, I had a recall. The judges throw it all out. They didn't even hear it. So they can continue to try that. I am a voice for the public, and that's what I tend to try to stay focused on. And you get elected. So you, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's tricky games up there. It's tricky games down here. I, I always look at Flint as Detroit North. It's like the North side. Absolutely. It's like just, in fact, all these characters are connected. Jeff Wright, the water commissioner, was an FBI Absolutely. snitch. Connected to Sam Riddle down here talking about the water. Uh, the bond attorney that was wrapped up in this RICO deal, right? He was the attorney yes. for Flint. He was the attorney for the county. And he was the attorney, bond attorney for the water authority. One-stop shopping. Yes. What's that guy doing? His name's Dave Masseron. 
He's the chief mm-hmm. financial officer of Detroit. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, fuck we Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right. So, let's get to the news. Flint broke is a joke. And when you're broke is a joke in America, blood flows. Flint, as of today, has a murder rate that's already 25% higher than it was all of last year. And last year rose 25% from the year before. Absolutely. What is up with your police department? What's what, what's up? Do you have police? Well, we just require, uh, acquired a new police chief. We have police, but we don't have the resources to have the right numbers. You know, it comes, everything is budget, budget, and you get what you pay for. No, so when you call 911 here, we get put on hold, literally put on hold. Three days sometime to get police to come out for complaints. Three days? Three days? Three days. So we use, a yeah, Michigan State Police assist our police department. So we got a lot of work to do. And I'm talking about the service, you know, the residents over here, they don't have nothing. So they rely on me as a council person. I tell them to call 911 and then call me. Don't do it opposite. And trust me, my phone wrong probably eight times since I've been waiting on y'all. Yeah. Wow. I see that with Eric Mays, too. It's like you're the only guys in the government doesn't listen. And when you have council members like you and people know you do, you never sleep in. Councilman, no, what are no. what are people saying? You said you got eight messages while you were waiting for us. What are people asking for? Give us an idea of what some of those messages contain. What are what do they need at this juncture? What are they asking well, you for? People, I don't know if they're doing it in Detroit. It's an older community. They come down through here 85 miles an hour. Every intersection, every street, 25 mile zones doing donuts in the middle of the street, the little Absolutely. circles with their charges. And, the, you know, the mayor tried to acquire, you know, uh, try to control the chaos, but it's overwhelming. When you, you got it, it's lawless. Everything is lawless. Didn't and you? now, you know, with this movement going on, defund the police, Black Lives Matter, now it's just totally out of control. Didn't you have... It's just law- and people are scared. Didn't you have like a thousand scared. people rally at night in a, a strip mall parking lot and like a yes. h- hundred rounds got lit off? Yes. Fuck. I was there. And, there, and there's I seen and there's no police there to break that thing up. It was a handful. It was overwhelming to the police department. And it was just people don't respect police no more. It's all it's, it's apparent all over the country. So now what do you do when you got a lawless society? And you know, what do we do? Just, they don't respect them. What do we so do? What, do we're, we we're do? Here what, looking is, to what, you? what is your proposal? What do you like? What do you if you had a blank slate? Endless resources. No, How no, no, Karen. No, this? sorry, sorry. No, this isn't. This isn't Alibaba. What do we do with what we got? Well, we don't have anything, Charlie. Well, well, wait that's a minute. Thing. But that's. Let's get into reality. What okay. are we gonna? What do you do? What do we do with nothing? What are you Davis? proposing? You got yeah, something I'll, very novel. You're proposing. This is what I would propose. We have a downtown like y'all have downtown Detroit. Remove the damn resources from downtown and put them where high crime is. We got police park watching empty buildings and parking lot downtown, but we can't get a police on the north end where me and Mays, Councilman Eric Mays is. Our ward is unpoliced at night. So move the resources. Shut down the city where it's high crime. Now that they express I-75, leave that open. Uh, you know, stores and stuff. We don't have a drug store on the north end. Everything is closed down but the crime. The clubs, you know, they just... It's just lawless. Every it's gunshots every night. So what are you I asking for? Because you're asking down. for. It make sense. You're asking for liquor stores to be closed at nine p.m. Is that what you're? You made news this week. What is the news? Yes, they need in high crime areas. We had two homicides. I guarantee you, within two weeks. I mean, they're killing each other over here. And this is smaller than Detroit. This is not a big uh, city over here. And every night, two or three shootings a night. And it's just the norm. People don't even gather at a crime scene no more. So what and do you want to do? Curtail that it was the, and the, the saddest part of it, the store owners in these liquor stores, they bring blight. They, they stores is wrapped with just beer and wine. They're not selling diapers and milk. So the stuff they selling, you can buy that at 7 o'clock at night and supply you all night long. You don't have to be open. But it's a place to lottery outside, and they don't do nothing about them stores. 
Somebody, yeah. enough is enough all over. Every time we travel, I travel all over the country. I could tell the hood when I get to the stores. It's a different. The suburb stores is neat. Them folks don't live in our community that's in Flint, Michigan. They don't employ the people. They employ them to sweep the parking lot, have sweep. But, you know, enough of that is enough. We ain't going to earn respect. We better start demanding. And I'm pissed with the Democratic election as well as the Republican because they use us as a tool. Why vote for people that ain't going to do nothing for us? That's we need I to have saying. people now to hold eight foot to the fire. I don't give a damn what they are. So how and far uh, is this getting any traction? I heard uh, read that the mayor's also, he kind of likes the idea, keep the keep the liquor stores closed after nine. Any any traction? Yes, this is press. And since I've been waiting, I suppose I've been down to City Hall with the mayor at the press conference as at 1.30. And I'm sitting, I wouldn't, you know, try to reschedule. But this traction there in uh, the, the newspaper, uh, Channel 5 called me and I talked to them while I was on hold a little bit. It's, it's getting quite a bit of traction. But traction is no good unless we put that into ordinance. I, it's I, time now to change and put teeth. Just like we talk about crime stoppers and dumping, they still dump. I like you know, the idea. I think it's a, I think it's a real novel approach it's outside of the box but what's going to stop them from loitering elsewhere i mean or doing mm -hmm. donuts and just gathering elsewhere oh that's simple one thing i noticed and i've been in this side on this side of town all my life so and another thing all of the people making all these decisions they don't live over here i know what it takes what it takes is this once you shut it down like on sunday when you ride by any of them liquor stores it's quiet it's totally quiet the more gas station where not because of the gas, but the stuff they serve in there, them is gas slash party stores. They don't care nothing about them. They let them congregate. They even bring chairs and couches at our stores outside. <laughs> couches? Lounge room. Couches? Couches once, and chairs. I once left the couch. I was leaving Mardi Gras. I hit the Mississippi state line. We brought a couch down with us. That thing was so soiled by the time we were done, we left it for the state of Mississippi uh, exit one. Soiled with what? Here you go. Mardi Gras. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to leave it at that. We know you have a press conference that you don't want to be at. We thank you for giving no bullshit news hour your time. You're a friend of the show. A hey, uh, cut to Mark's shirt right here, uh, mannequin. Look here, councilman. You see that? That's absolutely correct, Mark. I'm going to, that's, we sell those. Um, we're giving them to all our guests. We want to send you one, right? And the money goes to, Luke Nowacki will pay for it, and it goes to help kids of our choice. We don't put them out on Front Street. We're not trying to get any press off of it, but we will, you show us a kid that needs a little help, a little something in Flint, we'll send it, and we're going to send you one. We wish you all the luck, and we, we want to know who you're voting for November 3rd. That was my next question. <laughs> Who I'm voting for? Yeah. I'm torn between the two, but I really like Trump's attitude because I always wanted to be like him. I'm tired. Why the hell? I'm tired of being the tail. I want to be the head. I'm sorry. I'm tired of being broke. And that's my main. I know y'all frowning, but I, I'm i not into political. Give me somebody that's going to do something for me. My mom's, you vote, you my mom's just, voting you, for Trump. What am I going to frown at you? You said something, Councilman, that a lot of people, a lot of black people, a lot of Democrats are saying and they're getting criticized for it. But it's a legitimate position. And, yes. you, and you said at some point you've got to look at what you have repeatedly done and not gotten any results from. So that's not attack on anybody. But how long do you ask the same people for the same things and get no results? That's what I'm Absolutely saying. Correct. Only a little bit black. Job. Only a little bit black, and that's what I'm saying. I got well, I mean, I think I think everybody's asking that because you know people are so loyal to a party, um, not looking at a person, um, and you know when we start talking about civil rights and that whole thing, we bl black people have been asking for the same thing and marching for 99 years. Here, I, I just at, at some point you've got to reevaluate. This are 2020, you and we still marching. Come on now. Are you ready? Somebody look, wake the, up. the Democrats have Biden and Harris. The Republicans have Trump and Pence. But look, the Libertarians have uh, Jorgensen and Cohen. The U.S. taxpayers have Blankenship and Moore. The Green Party has Hawk, Hawkins and Walker. The Natural Law Party has De La Fuente and Richardson. There are other and ones. The new BS News Hour has LaDuff and Dumas. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, when I'm looking for knowledge and power, I turn on the no bullshit news hour.
Sir, last question. Would you, can I send you the disclaimer for Nuke Nowacki at Royal Alliance Associates, Inc.? Could you give us a little blues rendition to play every time we do this, this ad spot? Yeah. Oh, yes. Sweet. Cool. See, Trick Trick won't do it. What? But Maurice Davis will. Maurice Davis, I thank, will. thank you for being with us. The king of the party blues and the That's no me. bullshit councilman from Flint. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I really enjoyed y'all. And we're gonna we're gonna play your song on the out here, all right? All righty. All right, thank you. Thanks. All right. There's a lot of bullshit going on down here. There's Eric Mays. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, uh, just be, before we take you out, we're just gonna do this. I'm gonna give Karen the last word here. Then we're gonna give Red the last last word, who's so upset okay. with the election. He's last night he's in his spooky Uber car. I was freaking me out looking at it. Fucking ranting and raving, right? <laughs> I said, Yeah, send it to me. We'll put it on. Red, red, red's part of the family. Karen, give us the last word. Give us some words to live by this week. I, I just want everybody to, first of all, calm down. Um, and I know we're all tense, we're all anxious, we got a lot going on, and we're getting ready for a second wave, whether it's the flu or whether it's the pandemic or whether it's just the holidays. But as we go into this political season, I really want people to look at people. You are not making an educated or informed decision by being myopic um, and not looking at everybody. This isn't an endorsement or a support for anything or anybody, but do your homework. On another note, and Charlie's going to get mad at me, I need some help with my background because I don't want to change and go to another room. So email me and tell us, hey, what do I do? Charlie said, move my flower. I got Nipsey Hussle. I got LeBron over there. Tell me what you want to see in the background. Got a big negative space over your right shoulder. Just not That's into it. Right. Just, yeah. My mom was a florist. I'm, I'm in the Feng Shui and design. I this is my work position. I sit here and sometimes 12 hours a day, I work from here. I, I got a mug over there. I'm going to show you next week of what I do from this space. It's so, a shame. It's a shame. You. They shut that pond down. You should have done the show yeah. from out by the pond. That would have been a nice little look. Yeah. yeah. Next season. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. Karen, Mark mannequin. Thanks. Um, Thank you. Uh, uh, Red, uh, comedian Detroit Red, is get this, he's got a sponsor. I yeah. know we're fucking busting it there, but thank you out there. Thank you out there. What are we doing? About an hour? Uh, yeah, we're about an hour right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. See, an hour. That's all you needed. Nursing homes getting fixed. Flint, it's coming to a head. Flint ain't got shit, and we want to close the liquor store. These knuckleheads, uh, man, they got a shot. We now know from the defense attorney of the militia what the defense is going to look like and finally red brought to you by good helpers heating and cooling labor services i'll tell you more about it as i learn more about it i know if red would tell us more about yeah. it yeah all right red 313-270-3600 good helpers heating cooling labor services get your furnace checked don't get caught when it's freezing Roll it and we'll see y'all. Try to be good. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired as hell of this 2020 election. The candidates and every goddamn thing else that go around with it. First of all, I'm tired every time I turn on my TV for some relaxation and entertainment. All I see is two old white motherfuckers <laughs> that look like they wear the pants and pissing shit they di diaper on a regular, talking about what they gonna do, what this one did, what they ain't gonna do, and who did what. I'm tired. I don't even care who win no more. Just pick one of the old white men and hey, it's going to be what the hell it be. I'm tired of all the text messages and phone calls about am I registered to vote? Who am I going to vote for? Where am I going to vote? Damn, thank God we don't have daytime minutes no more because y'all have been to ram my damn phone bill up and ran my minutes out with all this stupid ass calling. I, I don't know who to hate worse. You, you folks with this election are the Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> Actually, it's y'all. Because even Jehovah Witnesses know when to stop knocking on your door. <laughs> right here in Wayne County, we don't have no money. They keep talking about we broke. I can't tell. Y'all keep finding money to keep printing up these goddamn absentee ballot applications. You know how I know this? Because I got eight at my goddamn <laughs> house right now. I don't know who in charge of this shit. But if I didn't send the first one back, why in the hell did you send me seven more? 
That means I don't want an absentee ballot. Why do you keep sending me the damn application like you going to convince me to do an absentee ballot? I'm walking in like I've done every election. I can't take this shit no more. We're in a pandemic and we're being harassed by election committees and, and the campaign. It's like dealing with an ex-girlfriend or a boyfriend who's a stalker. No matter how many times you tell them no, you keep seeing them bastards in your bushes. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> November 3rd, please hurry up and come so we can be done with this shit. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> Hey, leave this on because we got permission from the artist. You hear that, it's Facebook? That time. All you steppers report to the dance floor. This is yes. City Councilman yes. of Flint, Maurice Yo, Davis. Uh -huh. In his King other role up. is King of the Party Blues. Are you ready for a good time? Forget your troubles, leave them all behind. Ghostbusters. <laughs> In here, got plenty liquor and plenty beer. What, plenty of liquor? Till nine o'clock. Till nine o'clock. Everything is cool. Tonight we going back to the old school. Gonna take the sadness out of your blues. It's party time. Have you heard the news? It ain't no party. No. Cause I'm doing mine <laughs> You better be ready I'm warning you Cause taking parties to another level Is what I do Got the music pumping Everything is cool Tonight we going back To the old school Gonna take the sadness Out of your blues It's party time Have you heard the news yeah. Almost over. You got one another minute? Fuck it. One more time. Come on. Yeah. Can you get my phone off the net? What's my name? Davis. What's my name? Davis. King of Party Blues. Good night, y'all.